What you doing, Otaku? I'm the See, I'm going to talk about online conventions because Anime Expo Light and Funimation Con 2020 just finished. They were on July 3rd and 4th. I even did a kind of mock anime convention vlog about it. If you haven't seen it yet, I was pretty proud of how dumb it was, but you should check that out after this video. So, I'm going to just talk kind of on my thoughts of online conventions since uh they're going to be more this year uh hopefully mm, i'll get into it later first off i'm glad they did something i was looking forward to going to conventions this year so much and even though they're canceled it's nice that they're online and there's some really great positives with this and then like some other negatives are like ah eh, well you know what can you do so First off, it's just the amount of stuff I get to see. I did it in my blog, but I had to make a list of my schedule, and eventually I tried to use both my laptop and my TV to watch both channels. Not only that, I was two conventions. There's a whole lot of stuff on it. That also means there's a whole lot of people, and I've never been to Anime Expo. It's huge. I've only been to smaller ones, but them doing this online, one, it gets you to see these bigger names in anime, manga, cosplay, and industry, which is cool. People I probably wouldn't see at a convention, and at the smaller conventions at least. One day I went to the Anime Expo, but life is making that unaffordable to me right now. <laughs> Which is another thing is this was free. It was free to watch both of them. Funimation was weird because you had to register for it. Um, Anime Expo was easy. You could just watch on their YouTube or their two Twitch channels they have for it. And it was as easy as clicking on whatever on the website and it'll link you to their Funimation. They did it on their own website. It was eh, not as convenient. So of course I watch more Anime Expo than Funimation. I watch a few things on Funimation. But yeah, it, this being free is great until I wonder it's like money wise is this a like is this working for them? I don't I don't really see the economical benefits they get from this but it must not hurt them if they did it even though this is kind of the first time they did it like this and maybe they just don't know maybe they just were making sure they still did something so people don't forget or lose enthusiasm for them even if it may cost something it will still help people remember them for the future and i think this was funimation's first convention maybe it was just a first online convention i wasn't really sure exactly how that was working but yeah there was a whole lot of people i started off watching on amax with the viz media panel and they were talking like 20 years of naruto they had the uh english voice actors for Naruto, Sakura, and Barto. First off, I watched Naruto uh, as a kid in English, of course, because I was a kid and I didn't have access to subtitles back then. Now I watch Barto in subtitle. In Jap I watch it in Japanese. I never heard Barto's voice, so it threw me off a little bit. Not that I dislike the voice actress. It, it, it just caught me off guard because they did a little trailer thing and I heard Mitsuki's voice and I was like, oh wow. I was actually surprised because I actually like their pit, who they picked for that. And then I heard Barton and I was like, oh, that is not what I expected, okay. Anyways, going on through that. One of them, the voice actress for soccer, I can't remember her name. One, very country accent, southern accent. I don't know, it was weird. Uh, getting off track again. She was talking about how she doesn't like going to conventions and stuff like that and she has kids so that also made me realize this is a time for other voice actors who don't like conventions to also make more appearances to the public and their fans and stuff like that so that's a cool big benefit of doing this online and throughout the convention there was all kinds of stuff I could watch of course they still kept music which was interesting they did a flow concert but it was like a concert they did back in 2017 one of my favorite bands i'm glad they did it it's just yeah it was weird um th at the end they did uh lee Sanna, lee sanny um concert i wasn't i guess 
and it was weird because it had them on stage but there's not really an audience there wasn't a crowd in the background you can hear and it kind of it feels empty and weird but it's like it's still nice that they're doing it it's just I don't know, it gives you a hollow feeling and I guess overall what this does is even though I appreciate what they're doing it's kind of like it makes me miss real conventions even more and like I say all this I've only been to three anime conventions or three conventions of this type in my life but man those are such great experiences and yeah with this I could just sit at home I had a three liter thing of sake to keep me company and just sat in my chair on my couch wherever I was in my house and you know just watch it all day and I got to take in a lot more stuff whereas you're moving in between panels and rooms and then you get tired of just being out in public this I can come and just like hop in bed and take a nap whether I wanted to or not, it happened. <laughs> um, and then Anime Expo, they also did like on their on-demand stuff where some of the panels went onto their YouTube. Anyway, there's so many great things that come from this. But yeah, there's a lot of panels, workshops and stuff I got to watch. I watched a lot of voice actors either talk about them and their characters or just them talk about becoming voice actors. There's a couple panels on that. One of my favorite ones I watched was with, um, what, what was his name, uh, Tony Oliver, uh, uh, his was really good, then there was another one I watched later, it was, I liked his better, um, he was keeping it real, which I always like, some of them are kind of like too positive, and it's like, yeah, you can, you can really try and do this stuff, but let's keep it real, that's what I like about him, there was stuff about, there was, uh, like a East meets West, uh, getting into anime industry as a foreigner, all kind of these really cool panels. A lot of what I see at the conventions I've been to, mostly I've been Q&A, which, you know, it's all fun and stuff, but uh, these more like in-depth topics are cool to talk about. Yen Press did a little panel because they, the So I'm a Spider So What is getting anime next year. They were talking about the light novel with it, but not just the light novel, which, eh, I don't, I'm not really into that story. Uh, I was interested in the whole process of like the translating, the editing, all that kind of stuff. And because a while ago I saw Yimpress was looking for like assistant editor or something like that. And I, I was like, I thought about going for it, but my Japanese is not that great yet. But it's all these little things I got to see and it was great. It also reminded me, even though there wasn't a lot of cosplay I could look at, I also forgot one of the first people I, I saw doing cosplay was uh, the show Heroes of Cosplay with Ch 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 uh, Yaya Han. I'm getting the names. It's just, yeah, she was like one of the first cosplayers that really, and she, it was all over the place in both Anime Expo and Funimation. Um, so, yeah, there was some cosplayers. You didn't really get to see a lot of cosplay. Um, there was like, gallery or whatever you could see of cosplayers and they did mask a masquerade contest or whatever so they tried they tried to really keep this feel of an anime convention as best they can without it being in person and i really appreciate it but like i said i also miss doing the live ones and you know i'm looking forward to those coming back again but you know i am glad they did this so until we can do that i think crunchyroll is going to have one coming up I will probably watch that one again. But yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on these online con conventions. But what do you think? Go ahead and let me know. Did you watch them? If you did, let me know what kind of panels you watch and what you enjoyed the most. We can talk more about that uh, together. But you know what? If you like this video, go and actually give the video a like. If you want to see me talk more about anything anime related and such, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can see when I do all that. But until next time, I'm the AC. Thank you for watching and bye.